The August update of Home Assistant has arrived, 2023.8, and this month we are talking about shopping list improvements, support for wildcards, improved language translations, AI image support, and a huge improvement to the way events are handled. If you have ever tried to create an automation for a device like a Zigbee remote that generates events, you will know all about the pain of listening for events and picking out the relevant information and then pasting that into your automation and then trying to figure out why it doesn't work and so on. This has long been a thing in Home Assistant that has been in big need of an overhaul and that's exactly what we got in 2023.8. This update adds a new entity specifically for capturing these events and makes it much easier to work with events directly in the UI since it will now immediately display the event detected in both the entity and the logbook, along with if it was a single press, hold, double press, and other types of events. And you can easily use these events in your automations now too, rather than messing around in developer tools trying to capture the right information you need, a very welcome addition. As we often see, this hasn't just magically been added to every device and integration in Home Assistant now, it still needs to be added to integrations over time, but this release does add the framework and it has already been added to the MQTT, Matter, Philips Hue and HomeKit integrations, which is a good start and hopefully we will see many more added in the next couple of releases. Another much needed new feature for those of you out there who aren't native speakers of English is that services can now be translated into your native language. Previously, when you navigate around the Home Assistant UI, you would find that most things would show up properly in the language that you had configured, for example, German, but if you went in and created an automation where you were selecting a service, such as to turn on a light, you would find that those would appear in English, which could be a pretty jarring user experience. But now in 2023.8, those services can now show up in German or the language you have selected, making the user experience much nicer. Not all services have been translated yet, but a good chunk of them already have, and again, should only vastly improve over the next couple of releases. Nice. Another voice feature has also been snuck into 2023.8. This time we get support for something called wildcards. Wildcards essentially opens up a whole new way to use your voice with assist by using these placeholders or wildcards instead of having to hard code a new sentence each time. For example, using wildcards, I was able to add a custom sentence to an automation that lets me play any of my camera streams on any media player I have in the house using a single sentence, rather than having to hard code all of these different possible combinations into an automation and then trying to make that work. Wildcards can just do this for you. Extremely powerful stuff, and this has loads of possibilities like asking for a light to turn on with a certain effect or color, or potentially playing media from Jellyfin on your TV or that type of thing. The possibilities are really endless with wildcards. The wildcards feature also powers the next addition, which is the assist also supports adding items to your shopping list using your voice, making for a convenient way to remember items next time you go shopping. At the moment, it only supports adding single items, so you can't list a bunch of items using your voice and then have them all added as individual items just yet, and you also can't remove items either, but this is a good start and again, it shows the power of wildcards. Finally, for the big stuff this month, you can now generate AI images through OpenAI's DALI service by using the conversation agent, assuming you have an account set up and you're willing to pay for it. You can simply add a prompt through the new generate image service in Home Assistant and using the service response feature that was added in last month's release, it will give you a link to a URL with the image that it generated, which you can then use in scripts or automations or to display on your dashboard. Not sure how much practical use this has, but it could be a really fun thing for kids to use. As for the little things this month, firstly, Blueprint creators can now add a new condition selector to their blueprints for even more customization. The first install experience has been improved with a new address searching panel to set your location instead of dragging that little pin around. The EasyViz and Roborock integrations have been improved to include even more entities and device types. There has been performance improvements once again, specifically when visiting add-ons, 
and the Unified Integration has support for QR codes for access. As for new integrations this month, we see six new integrations added, including a couple of new power ones, which is cool, along with two new integrations available to set up from the UI instead of YAML. As for breaking changes this month, we have what is probably the shortest breaking changes list that I can ever remember seeing in all of my time of using Home Assistant, which we love to see. And as always, just make sure to have a quick check before updating for anything that is relevant to you. And that is about it for this release. Lots of new stuff to enjoy as always. I am personally really looking forward to the new event entities becoming a thing over the next few releases. Events were always a bit of a pain to deal with in the past, so this is a really cool new addition. Do let me know your favourite new feature from this release down below. As always, the wildcard support is super cool too. I suspect that is going to be really popular. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video.